Biovivacious. I am Sebastian. Biovivacious is a YouTube channel dedicated to clear fundamentals of biosciences and make the subject exciting. Let us begin our discussion on another very important and interesting topic in carbohydrate metabolism that is gluconeogenesis. So the word gluconeogenesis means, let us understand, neo means new. Genesis means to synthesize or to produce. Gluco is glucose okay so gluconeogenesis is synthesizing new glucose uh, if you look at uh, certain organs in our body like uh, kidney nervous system especially the brain rbc's testis uh, the cornea of the eye all these require glucose and glucose is the preferred fuel molecule for all these organs uh, our brain itself requires about about 120 grams of glucose per day. It requires about 120 grams. Now, um, you will have roughly about 20 grams of uh, glucose in uh, blood. So therefore, we have to constantly supply this glucose. If glucose is, and you will have certain amount of glucose uh, in the reserves as glycogen in liver as well as in uh, muscle it will be available but if the liver glycogen can supply maybe maximum for about uh, 10 to 18 hours maximum so then body will be without glucose so therefore constantly there is a need to synthesize glucose and this synthesis of glucose cannot take place by the reversal of glycolysis because we have learned earlier that if the, all the thermodynamic principles or if the flux is, uh, is in the formation of pyruvate. So therefore, you cannot reverse that pathway. So therefore, if at all you have to reverse the pathway of glycolysis, it has to take a different route altogether. So therefore, today we are going to discuss about how do we reverse this pathway of glycolysis so that we are able to make glucose so therefore this is called gluconeogenesis now remember this is a universal pathway uh, it's found in animals plants fungi other uh, microorganisms so it is found in it's therefore it is a universal pathway and uh, uh, though it is a universal pathway reactions are by and large it's the same in all organisms except the regulatory mechanism may vary from organism to organism so that is something that we need to keep in mind about 90 percentage of gluconeogenesis will occur in liver and 10 percentage will occur in kidney so this is how uh, the distribution or the load of glucose production is uh, happening so we have already seen that 90% uh, of gluconeogenesis will take place in liver and only about 10% of gluconeogenesis will occur in kidney. Now, um, if you look at the definition of gluconeogenesis, Leninger gives a beautiful definition and that definition is, it is synthesis of glucose from non-carbohydrate precursors. So that calls us for looking at what are the requirements for uh, gluconeogenesis. So therefore, if the requirements are, the three requirements, the three non-carbohydrate precursors, the first one is glycerol. Second one is lactate. And the third is alanine so therefore glycerol is coming from fat lactate it's basically it's coming from a carbohydrate and alanine is coming from protein so these are the requirements 
Now let us explain how each of these requirements are made available in liver or in kidney. We take a first of all glycerol. Glycerol as you know it is an alcohol so the structure of glycerol is CH2OH. So this is structure of glycerol. glycerol. Now this glycerol is first of all acted upon by, so remember this is coming from triacyl glycerol metabolism. If the free fatty acids are removed and only the glycerol is staying back and this glycerol is acted upon by an enzyme known as glycerol kinase. Glycerol kinase. So remember kinase enzyme requires Mg2 plus ATP is broken down to ADP. So therefore inorganic phosphates get attached to the third position. So you will have glycerol 3 phosphate. Now once you have glycerol 3 phosphate, if the next enzyme is a dehydrogenase enzyme. So therefore that enzyme is glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. Now this dehydrogenase is an NADH dependent, uh, sorry NAD plus dependent dehydrogenase, NAD plus, so which will extract two H plus so therefore NADH plus H plus so therefore it gets reduced in the resultant product look at the structure of glycerol and the resultant product is CH2OH C double bond O CH2 OP this molecule is called dihydroxy acetone phosphate dihydroxy acetone phosphate now remember, so we have removed two hydrogen from the second carbon atom. So that's why it is dihydroxy acetone phosphate. Now as you know, dihydroxy acetone phosphate is one of the intermediates in gluconeogenic pathway. So therefore, this will be taken care of.